Peace and love, peace and love. I tried to start this video a few minutes ago, but I realized I didn't have any space on my phone. So I had to delete some videos to create some space. OVO cat. <laughs> this cat sitting in the street like the OVO owl. That was random. All right, so this morning I'm on my way to work. Um, let me slow down. The kitty's outside playing. This lady walking with a whole sling on her arm. Oh, goodness gracious, she committed. All right, so this morning, um, this video is, is very, very current. I'm not saying none of the other ones are current, but I'm talking about this thing is fresh, and it's it's something I know I'm gonna have. I've got I gotta learn, and I'm just gonna share it because I do know it will be helpful. But even when look, that sound like that. Even when they don't believe, but no, even when. Learning, you got you got to learn. I don't even know how I want to title this thing. It's just it it, it just on me, man. Like, um, but pretty much, we're gonna have to learn in this time. If you are one of the people who have been given guidance or um, been kind of telling people some things for a while. You know, giving them some advice or some some steps of of how they can help their situation or help a situation. Um, not because you're a know-it-all, but just from your experience and and there is knowledge that you have gained over the years that a lot of things you have a particular understanding of, right? And there's nothing you should feel less than about or feel. You know, like you should hide that knowledge or hide that light because of how other people perceive it. But one thing that will make you feel like you don't want to share your knowledge anymore is when people don't appreciate the knowledge that you share or the guidance that you share, the wisdom that you share. When you when you know you tell somebody something or you've told somebody something and then it comes to pass later and then they got to come talk to you about it or or they don't come talk to you about it. But they're having a conversation about it and trying to come up with a solution that you already gave them a long time ago. And then they they they'll 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 they'll, they'll speak the solution that you gave them as if it was their own without even saying to you, man, I I appreciate you for, for telling me that or for showing me that. Um that, that right there, that makes it real hard for a person to continue to share knowledge. It makes it really difficult to continue to share at that point. Because you know you have already told this person or these people this before. So, my current example is uh, at work right now, right? Uh, I told y'all before I work at two different locations. Now, out of the two locations that I work at, this is my second stint with this particular company, right? I worked for this particular company in one of those restaurants for three years. Then I left the company. And then when I came back, my job title or responsibilities changed. I moved into a, a less active position, which is what I do now, the inventory. But I do it at two locations. One location is a location that I used to work at for three years before. The second location is one that was added to me when I returned. So, 
me fill you in on who I was my first time there. My first time there, I did not have the best attitude, um, but I knew what needed to be done. I was, you know what I'm saying, I was very smart and wise. Uh, <clears throat> I could recognize problems and create solutions. However, it was not always up to me to implement those solutions. You had to, you know, bring the solutions to, you know, the the the, the owner, and 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 if he's okay with your solution, then he'll give you the okay to implement. But without his approval, you know, or the 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 micromanagement, without that, you weren't allowed to implement. So uh, there are a lot of things though that didn't require his approval that I just brought with me and <clears throat> kind of introduced to the team at that time. Now, I left there after those three years, and when I came back after like a year or so, a lot of the things that I had brought and taught within those three years, this first restaurant that I worked at, they, they still do it. They still do the things that I that I that I brought, and I'm not taking all the credit. Like I brought every idea, but I brought a lot of things that worked, and they're still doing them, and they're still winning as a result, to a certain extent. Because there's some other personal things that people have to learn to work on. I know I'm probably trying to say a lot, but people have to work on their personal issues as well as the work issues in order for any work environment to work. If you're only focus on the work issues is going to fail because you're lacking the personal development. So you got to have both aspects in order for it to work. So the issues at this first restaurant <clears throat> is that they lack a lot of the leaders, the majority of the leaders lack the ability to assess themselves and fix themselves. They find blame in everybody else. But the, the, as far as the business operations and, and how they get things done, a lot of the things that I taught and brought, they're still using and that is working for them, right? Okay. So when I came back after after being gone from the company, like I said, I, I began to do a different job, but at two locations. And in doing that job, I'm able to see some of those people who, who worked with me or, uh, you know, at the first location when I was there. A lot of the things that we grew and, and, and did together, they're still doing them. You get to see your work in progress. You, I mean, or get to see your work in play, in use, and they're winning from it, right? Okay. It's beautiful for me to go in there and hear certain words, key words that I know I brought to the restaurant. These were not words that were used in the restaurant. This was not communication that was used in the restaurant before I came. I brought these words because I know who I got the words from. I got the words from somebody else that I learned it from and I brought those things to the restaurant because I saw the lack and the need for it. So I brought those things. Now they use these words now at both restaurants, right? I don't walk around there and say, ha that's, you know, that's what I did. But to hear it, I, I'm grateful that they were able to take those things and utilize them and win with them. Now, what I'm getting at here is at the second location though, which was the one that was newest to me when I came back, the one that was added to me when I came back, that location was different from the location that I worked at, right? It was a different culture in there. It was like a, a real negative, I didn't play that negative stuff. Like at the location I was at, I brought that positive energy. I motivated, I encouraged people, but it was mixed with me not having the best attitude. So I also used to get on to people. You know, I'm not saying you don't need to do that, but I used to get on to people. And sometimes I'd be bringing that edge that probably a little too much to bring at work. You know what I'm saying? Like I really get on people. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I didn't have the personal development necessarily at that time. You know, I used to, come on little squirrel. I took you out of here. Uh, I didn't have the personal development, so I wasn't working on my attitude quite yet. You know what I'm saying? It was like I was into like more business and finance, but I wasn't working on myself. So, long story short, uh, and this ain't really no long story short. This is a long story that might be long. Uh, 
But so, that second location though had a different culture. It was very negative. It was very toxic. It was very uh, dysfunctional. And so, when I came and began to try to implement some of those principles and values that I had, they rejected it, right? They rejected a lot. So, in me working in both locations, I was able to go to the first location and see a lot of the things that I brought working. Go to the second location, see all this dysfunction and their refusal to accept my new ideas, my, my, my change. They were refusing change. Now, as a result, that restaurant ended up getting torn down the second location, but they got a new, a brand new one built. So it, it just brought, it was supposed to bring new life, new energy, new, you know what I'm saying? New everything, but guess what? You brought students of that same culture, products of that same negative culture, you brought them into the new restaurant as leadership. So now what's happening is the restaurant is failing, right? Failing terribly. Now, my responsibility is inventory. They have the inventory that they need. That's my responsibility. But they don't have the leadership. They don't have accountability. These are things that they lack. So long story short, this I keep saying long story short. I'm gonna stop saying long story short because it ain't gonna be short. So this morning we have these group messages where they can communicate. I used to talk a lot in them. Now I'm really kind of quiet because I'm really just at that place where I really ain't got too much else to say to y'all because y'all don't listen anyway. And it shows at this restaurant failing, but then I can drive up the road to the other restaurant that I work at and it's beautiful and peaceful, full of love and good energy. That's where I come from. That's a lot of what I brought there. Anyway, so that's what I've been trying to bring to this second location, but they rebuke it so much that they haven't accepted it or adopted it. So this morning, there's an issue because they're running into a problem on a regular basis of uh, certain jobs and responsibilities not being done and it's the leadership's responsibility to make sure that those things get done. So, I've made recommendations, suggestions of how to fix these problems months ago, years ago, before they tore the restaurant down. I made these recommendations and suggestions and they ignored them. You know, I would come in and give speeches. The owner would, who, who finally started somewhat listening to stuff I say, he, he, he would come in and co-sign everything I'm saying. Like, yeah, I mean, why don't y'all just do this? This is what Milton said. I, I mean, I think that would be the best idea. But there's no accountability. So you you can I can make the recommendation in, in me being there doing inventory. I see the problem. Like Instead of me just saying, hey, y'all, this is a problem. I'm like, hey, here's a problem, but here's how we can fix it. If y'all want it, here it is. I'm, I'm giving this to y'all because y'all are the leaders who are running this restaurant. I'm not the leader running this restaurant. I'm maintaining your inventory. That's my responsibility. That's why I'm in here in an hour and out of here in an hour. In and out. So I bring you these recommendations and you ignore them. Or you don't take me seriously. You don't follow them. I, I brought suggestions of having checklists. Have your leaders have a checklist of what they need to complete on their shift. And it's generic. So it's the same thing every day. And all you got to do is check it off that you got them done. It, ain't, it doesn't necessarily mean that you physically had to do them, but that you delegated and made sure somebody got it done. And then you check it off. And that's how we will ensure and guarantee that the jobs are done or completed each day. But you refuse and rebuke that. I even went as far as making checklists for you. And putting them on the computer and even giving you the options of all the uh, all the leaders. Hey, when you have some time, I put these in the office on the desktop computer. Uh, and if you want to add or, you know, anything like that, y'all can feel free to add to them. These are for y'all to utilize. Because y'all are the ones here actually having to do the jobs. Nobody make a move with nobody. So months later, though, guess what they what they come out and say? 
Man, we need to do some checklists. Now, and, and, and I'm finna get to my point. I am finna get to my point. But I just want y'all to think about that. Like, we're talking since 2018, I've been at two locations since 2018. It's 2021. That's three years. And I've been saying the same thing. I have been just to make sure I wasn't crazy, the group messages, they, they go back in time as far as they go back. So I'm able to scroll back in time. And I did this, y'all, just to make sure I ain't crazy. I went and scrolled back and found some of these messages where I've told them these things over the years. And I screenshotted them. I got them all in my phone. I'm just waiting on the day that we have the conversation so that I can show that I've been telling y'all this for years. But I may never even have that conversation because I may be gone from here before we even have to ever talk about it. But that's these are examples of the things that I'm talking about. But I'm, I'm finna get to my point of what I got to learn from this. Uh, man. So now this morning there's an issue, issue where there's certain products that come frozen that need to be thawed out to use. Well, if you don't get them into a thawing situation a thawing cooler or refrigerator to thaw them out in enough time, you know, it takes about two days for this product to thaw, right? 48 hours. So you got to be on top of it. You got to keep the rotation going to keep it thawing. So the next day or whatever, you'll have them ready to use, blah, 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 blah. Well, on yesterday, once again, they dropped the ball and didn't get this product thawing. Now, I, I saw it while I was there, but I saw somebody with their hands on it. I saw somebody with their hands on it, so I said, oh, well, good. He's about to take care of that. I let it be. I didn't say a word to the person. I didn't bother that person because I saw their hands on it. So I'm just knowing, oh, great. They're about to go ahead and knock this out. <clears throat> Because I saw it was it wasn't partially empty. The entire thawing of this product, that whole section where we thought was totally empty. There was nothing in it. Now mind you, I said it takes 48 hours to thaw this product. So if it's totally empty on yesterday, what are you gonna use today? So this morning, there's messages going off between the leadership and the owner trying to figure out what happened, you know, and then they say, this is the solution. Why don't y'all just keep the product in the cooler so that it just automatically thaws? When it comes in off the, the delivery truck, instead of putting it into the freezer and keeping it frozen, why don't you put it into the uh, the, the, the thaw or the, the refrigerator to thaw so you don't even have to worry about it being frozen. Guess what, y'all? Guess what they do at the other location that I that I work at, the one that I come from? Guess what they do? They don't put it in the freezer. They put it in the cooler so that it'll already be thawed. They've been doing this since the product was introduced, right? You want to know why? And I'm not taking all the credit, but you want to know why? Because we saw that issue then. That's been two, almost maybe three years ago, maybe since 2018. We saw the issue of not being able to thaw it fast enough. So we just said, instead of freezing it, we're just going to keep it thawed. And I brought that same recommendation down the hill to this location in 2018 and told them, this is what we should do so that we don't have to worry about them being frozen. And guess what we run into in 2021? And this is not the first time this morning. This this has happened. This this restaurant has been torn down and rebuilt. It opened up in July, July 1st. It's happened at least 20 times since July. Was this October? It's happened at least 20 times since July. That it's been frozen. So 
My question is, this morning, as I'm watching these messages, I didn't even reply or respond because I'm done talking to y'all. Two things we can grab from this. Number one, imagine if y'all had just taken my advice from 2018 and just been doing this in the first place and not having to worry about it ever being frozen. Number two, what if you had put it on the checklist that I recommend it for y'all that way somebody's checking each day to make sure that this is being thought so now that i got my venting out of the way this is the lesson i'm supposed to get from this <laughs> that even when you tell people you gotta find the strength you gotta dig deep down within yourself to not tell them I told you so. <laughs> Cause I was so bad to say, but I'm not gonna give them that. I'm not even gonna give them that energy. That, that's one of the beautiful things I've learned on this journey of, of, of learning myself and knowing myself and loving myself is that don't give people that much energy. They're not even worth it. You know, their ignorance is causing their own downfall when I've been here for really long term since 2014 in the company, but you have yet to utilize what I bring. You ignore it. And, and I would have to dig deeper into explaining that because I actually, I, I actually do have a relationship with the owner. I think I mentioned that before. We have a relationship and we do have real conversation and, and, and <clears throat> you know, to my face, he holds me highly to my face. But the fact that he doesn't just crack down and say, all right, listen, this is going to be the new structure. Milton needs to be here. And then he will then develop our whole leadership team because this is what he's good at. Because he won't break down and do that for whatever reason, I ain't going to get into that. I, I'm not going to try to determine what his reason is or was. But really, he's had seven years to have me or to to have me in his presence, in his company that could bring all this change. And, um, you know, I got to find it. I got to dig deep to not have a conversation with him and say, I told you so. To not have a conversation with his leaders and say, I told you so. But because of a lot of their nature and a lot of the way that they were raised, they feel they know everything and they feel they know what's best. And um, as a result, this restaurant is failing. Um, there's a lot I could do to help this restaurant, but at this point I choose not to because they don't listen. So I'm going to go ahead and count my inventory or the inventory. And I'm going to get the hell out of here today. I got a photo shoot today and that's what I'm looking forward to. Doing things that I need to do. Things that I want to do for my future, for my family future. This restaurant is for this owner's future. And um, man, if people are not gonna always respect you, people are not gonna always value you. But even if you have given warning, you've given guidance, you've given advice, you've tried to help people, if they ignore it, if they don't wanna use it, fine. They don't have to. But even as angry as it may make you or make me, <laughs> We got to find it deep down inside to not say I told you so. We don't have to say that. We don't even have to bother with that. We don't have to give that type of energy to say I told you this was going to happen. Um, I got, I'm, I'm working on how to still have love for, for these people even though they, they, they hard-headed, man. Whew. So I've been I've been working on it, y'all. I've been real peaceful. I've been real 
You know what I'm saying? Just kind of fluid. Just kind of letting things flow. This is what people, the decisions that people want to make. Fine, y'all make these decisions. I don't have to go down with y'all. Because I'm going to move a certain way. I always move a certain way. I'm going to move with positivity, with love, uh, you know, with, with, with a righteous mindset. And those who oppose that, you just really let me know who you are. This video probably saying a whole, whole, whole lot. I don't even know. But uh, the thing I wanted y'all to get from this is there are going to be some people that you've given advice to or guidance to who have not seen you as anybody worth telling them anything. And it, it's not always a hate thing. Sometimes it is a hate thing. They hate you. They dislike you. So they don't want to listen to you. Sometimes it's not that they hate you. They just can't see you being the person to give them the, the teaching or the guidance because of because of where you come from or because of your life or because of your skin color or because of your age. They don't think you know it well enough. But they then definitely don't understand how this thing works if they think like that because anything can be utilized to bring knowledge and to give you a message from the and i said this before from the birds to a worm to a a a, a, a sign to a homeless person to a, a little baby a child a senior person uh, uh all these things can bring you messages. So if you have the mindset that a particular person can't bring you knowledge or can't bring you something because they're smaller than you or little or whatever you think and because they're black or, you know, because they're white, or, you know, they can't bring you a message. You ain't ready then because you're not willing to accept that that knowledge can come from anywhere. You got to be open to receive it, though. And if you miss out. Be ready to deal with the consequences that come from you not taking the warning, from you not listening to the goddess that was given. Now, y'all have a beautiful day. It's Saturday. Uh, I'm not going to be in here long. I'm going to try to make a video later. I plan to make a video later, rather, uh, from the photo shoot. So, peace and love, y'all.